His Excellency Dr. Hussein al Shahristani, uh, the oil minister of Iraq. Uh, good morning to you, sir. Thank you so much for joining us here on Bloomberg. Good morning to you. Uh, sir, we are talking so often these days about the price of crude oil. Yesterday it touched $80 a barrel. What do you think the fair value of crude is right now? Well, a fair value is a value where the investors feel confident that they can make investment in marginal oil fields and uh, produce oil because total dependence on OPEC production is not in the interest of the world. And uh, we feel the um, range where it is now should give sufficient uh, profit margin for the investors really to invest in developing new fields. So uh, we are comfortable where it is. And it's really the investors who determine what level would uh, satisfy their investment to uh, be able to produce more oil. We are just now looking at, at a map of Iraq and some of the oil fields that are up for bidding right now. How much investment uh, could oil companies expect to have to put out to get those oil fields up to the level of production? Uh, we have already had the first bid round in June um, this year. Three of those fields, uh, giant fields, have already been um, accepted by the um, international oil companies with a total plateau production of more than six million barrels a day in six years' time. The investment required to develop these three fields uh, will be about $100 uh, billion. In the second bid round that's coming before the end of the year in December, we have 10 more fields, three of which are giant fields, and we expect a similar kind of investment would be required to reach a similar plateau production. Now, BP and CNUC are active within Iraq right now. They took part in that first round of bidding that you mentioned there. Today, Bloomberg News is reporting that in the second round, you've actually adopted the practice of direct negotiation rather than bidding. What has changed this time around? No, no, this uh, media report is not accurate at all. Okay. Uh, all our, uh, all our uh, fields are open for transparent, competitive bidding in bid rounds as we did in the first bid round. And the second bid round is going to be exactly the same. What has happened in the first bid round, there was um, a, a misreading into the clause uh, about taxation. Some companies thought that 35% Iraqi tax is going to be applied to all the income that they receive, including their capital um, uh, capex that is going to be uh, returned. Well, we explained to them this was not the case. The 35% uh, tax only applies to the profit, which is the remuneration fee that they collect uh, for any additional uh, production. So it was really that clarification that was needed and that uh, taxation clause was rephrased to reflect that uh, position. Other than that, there has been no changes to the contract and we do not negotiate contracts. Contracts are uh, presented in the bid rounds. They are either accepted or rejected and whoever accepts it, he will be required to sign the contract within one month. This is the um, bidding protocol in the second bid round. Okay, yeah. and I, I do want to touch again on that question of flexibility, uh, but just to revisit the point, um, the Italian oil company Eni, uh, their CEO made comments at an oil conference in Europe saying that he's expected to sign a contract on the Zubair field in Iraq within days. Yes, the ANI consortium, the consortium led by ANI, mm -hmm. has um, submitted a bid uh, in the first bid round for the Zubair field, and they scored the highest uh, score uh, because of their plateau production, their proposed plateau production. However, they failed to accept the maximum remuneration fee that Iraq has set for that field, okay. which was $2 per barrel at that time. What happened since then, after uh, it was explained to them that the taxation formula, uh, they recalculated uh, their estimates and they came back to us and they told us they do accept our remuneration fee of $2. Once they've accepted it, 
they had already the highest score. We told them, okay, now uh, you can um, initial the contract, and they uh, are willing to do so. So it was really the company coming back to the terms and conditions that they would not be uh, uh, able to accept uh, on 30th of June. How much can the uh, Iraqi people expect to make off of some of these oil contracts? Well, uh, it depends on the uh, oil price because these contracts are service contracts. The companies are paid in dollars per incremental barrel they produce, so they do not have any share in the oil and assuming the price where it is today at 75 to 80 dollars per barrel uh, Iraq will be receiving about 99 percent uh, re revenue from the oil produced. The figure 100 billion dollars has been cited as an estimate on how uh, much foreign firms investment in two fields uh, in the supergiant Ramallah, excuse me, Ramallah field would bring in to yes. the Iraqi people. Is that mm -hmm. an accurate figure for those two fields, 100 billion? No, uh, the 100 billion is an estimate for the three fields. These are the Rumaila, the Zubair, and the West Corner Phase One field. This is only an estimate because what we actually be, be spending, there is a joint management committee that have to approve every expenditure, and depending on the cost of the drilling and the cost of service installations and so on, that um, investment can change a little bit. Iraq has a tremendous potential, a tremendous natural resources here, but in the past few months there have been large oil finds in the Gulf of Mexico and elsewhere. With that in mind, how has the tone of this round of bidding and this round of negotiations changed given uh, the level of oil that is now uh, presumed to be uh, available to these firms? Well, the um, enthusiasm we have um, um, seen, uh, 44 uh, oil companies out of 45 qualified ones have already um, um, either bought the data packages or indicated to us that they're going to take part in the bidding. So they are very keen really to uh, work in Iraq. Uh, I think the uh, oil market realizes that any uh, significant um, additional oil production in the world is going to be from Iraq in and as we expect the as we, as we expect the world to depend on oil as a major source of energy for at least the 20 years to come I think um, there is no um, alternative to, uh, to Iraqi uh, additional production uh, one concern that we hear uh, from investors, sir, as you well know, is the lack of hydrocarbon legislation in Iraq right now. Sort of that sense from foreign firms that they won't be protected should there be a change of government post the January elections. How do you assuage those fears? Uh, of course, a um, uh, 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 hydrocarbon law will be an assurance to the companies and to the um, um, uh, Iraqi side uh, that a deal is, um, is, is firm and um, approved by the legislation. However, we have been waiting for this um, hydrocarbon law for more than two years in the parliament. And because of political differences between the various parties, it has nothing to do with the law. It's really the political differences that has hindered this legislation. Uh, the country cannot wait sitting on those huge oil reserves and not benefiting its people. Uh, mm -hmm. The um, international oil companies have come to us and said, well, they don't really need to wait uh, for the legislation of that law. They'll be very happy if the contract can be approved by the Council of the Ministers, and that's what we are doing now.